I want to start in 1981, then, and I want to talk about the cadet, the Canberra Bureau Chief, and the schoolboy. <laughs> the cadet, of course, is Laura, 19-year-old Laura Tingle, who's just been part of the Fairfax intake, and she's been assigned to work on the Australian Financial Review, where I happen to be the political correspondent and Canberra Bureau Chief. The schoolboy, 13-year-old Scott John Morrison, <laughs> has just started at Sydney Boys High School. So we fast forward 25 years to 2006. I have ridden off into the sunset doing other things. Uh, the cadet has now taken my old job in the Canberra Press Gallery. Um, she, where she has um, also dethroned me from the position I used to hold at the Fin Review, where I was known as the Queen of the Long Sentence. <laughs> <laughs> and I held the land speed record for some time uh, from awarded by the subs every week for having written the longest first sentence for a Canberra Observed column. <laughs> and I think you remember this happening, don't I, you? I do. They used, to, they used to have a book on you, Anne. You know, how long will it be this week? <laughs> And I think, I think the, um, the winning entry was 193 words. Um, <laughs> this is at a time when the normal first sentence for a, for a, a column should be 30 words. Anyway, Laura took, a, took over for me in more respects than one because she also likes a long sentence. The schoolboy um, has left school and he has just um, launched an advertising campaign for Australia called Where the Bloody Hell Are You? And he's just about to be sacked from his job as General Manager of Tourism Australia. <laughs> and we still don't know why. <laughs> A year later, he enters federal politics. Fast forward again to 2018, and Laura Tingle is now Chief Political Correspondent for the ABC 730 program, and Scott Morrison is Prime Minister of Australia. Uh, Mr Morrison, the Prime Minister, has a well-known aversion to appearing on Laura's program. <laughs> he does not like to be interviewed by Laura Tingle, so my first question to you, Laura, is why not? <laughs> <laughs> what? Why is Scotty so scared of you? <laughs> Look, I, think, I, I like to think this is an urban myth, but one I'm cultivating. Um, <laughs> Uh, so, in fact, the Prime Minister has not been on 7.30 uh, since, I think, May last year. So I'm not taking it personally. Uh, but there certainly is um, a certain hostility to me, I think, out of the Prime Minister's office. They're entitled to that. Um, but, um, you know, his loss, you know? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I mean it, it, if you're a politician, you want to speak to somebody. Uh, you're not speaking to me or to Lee Sales. You're speaking to about a million people mm. who watch the program every night. Who vote. Who vote. Mm. Uh, and apparently he doesn't feel he has any, uh, anything to gain from talking to that audience. So he's lost. Well, do you think he's just given up on them? Uh, look, I, I have this theory about not just him but about... Uh, about, I think, certainly the, the case of the government's media strategy, but I think it also applies to some of the state leaders and things as well. It used to be the case that in election campaigns, you'd move to this system, and it's been the case for probably 30 years, where you, there'd be this sort of staged event in the morning, uh, and they'd do the media, and then they'd disappear for the day. So that, that was a way of controlling what the message was on the day. And if you think about it, I think that's sort of what the government is now doing in general. They go on breakfast television, breakfast radio, whatever, do the, paper, do the drop to the papers. And I don't think that they feel that they need to talk at night uh, as much as they would have done a decade ago. Uh, you know, it's, it, it is different. I think the role of the political interview in current affairs is changing. I mean, they're out there everywhere, all day, if they, if they want to be. Um, so by the time it gets to night time and, you know, there's a specific focus on them, um, they sort of don't see that there's as much value. They're more vulnerable. I mean, I think that's really strange because 
It's a different audience. I mean, I, I don't think, I mean, I think of myself, I don't watch breakfast television, so if, 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 if a politician's on breakfast television, I'm not going to see them. But if they're on 7.30, I'm more likely to see them. So there's whole audiences that they are show, basically showing contempt for. Yeah, absolutely. Complete contempt. Okay. Uh, we're going to shock. 